if there's one word that you need to be able to understand to actually understand lifting weights and exercise, it's this word. And many of you have probably heard of this word, torque. And what is torque? Well, torque basically represents a force's effectiveness. I'm gonna describe it very simply in just a second here, but what torque isn't is, torque is not a twisting force. You often hear that that is how it's described. So let's imagine a, a story, okay? Two dudes are having a competition, and the competition is very simple. Who can weigh down a seesaw? Okay, so here's dude A and here's dude B. And on week one, the first time they do it, um, dude A dominates the competition and the seesaw tips down in this direction, okay? And so the seesaw now is basically stuck like this, All right? So just pretend that dude B is up there, dude A is down there. The next week they come back to do the competition again and dude B thinks he has it in the bag. And the reason he thinks that is because he's gained 10 pounds. He's just eaten an enormous amount of food uh, through the past week, and so he hops on. And yet still, even being 10 pounds heavier, dude A wins the, wins the battle. Because he later discovers that dude A is actually 20 pounds heavier even at that point than, than dude B. So dude B has to really start to think like, ugh, the only rules of this competition are basically just I have to just weigh the uh, seesaw down to my side, what else can I do? So dude B comes up with a really creative solution and he doesn't gain any weight. He actually, uh, maybe he, he lost weight, you know, from, from week two to week three because he wasn't force feeding himself. So week three, he comes back and he says, hey, you know, I, um, I, I thought of something creative. What he does is he comes in with a nail and a hammer and some more wood it's a wooden seesaw, and he actually just extends the length of his seesaw. So what happens? Well, his body weight, oops, gets distributed much farther away from where this center point is. So what happens immediately is this side goes down, and boom, the seesaw tips all the way in the other direction. Let's just pretend those lengths made sense. So what happened here? Well, Dude B basically found a creative way to weigh his side of the seesaw down. Why did that happen? So when we looked at this original case, basically what we saw between the two dudes was because this dude was heavier, this dude stood no chance. But the second that this dude moved farther away from essentially where this thing was pivoting, we call this a pivot point, an axis of rotation, whatever you want to call it, a pivot point is fine. Basically, when this guy moved farther away, he became more effective at weighing the seesaw downward, right? And again, that's what torque is. Torque is a force's effectiveness. And we can find a force's effectiveness, not just by identifying the force, but also multiplying the force by um, a distance to an axis. And we'll get into the specifics about what kind of distance it actually is. But that distance is known as moment arm, which many of you may or may not have heard of, okay? And so the way that we would identify moment arm of either one of these individuals is always relative to the axis in question. And so if the weight of their body is going downward like that, basically what we would do is we would find a distance that looks like that, right? And so further context here, a moment arm has to always be 90 degrees from the force direction. So notice that I did not draw this line at an angle this way or at an angle this way, right? I picked on this one because this one was 90 degrees from that force direction. So this is why in exercise torque is so important to understand because the amount of resistance we experience at our joints is not just a product of the weight on the dumbbell that we see. It's also a product of how far that weight is away from a working joint. So let's take an example of a dumbbell curl and let's say that we're looking at a dumbbell curl from the side and we're saying that there are three phases to this curl. There's phase one at the bottom, phase two in the middle, and then phase three sort of at the top, right? And so in each of these phases, the dumbbell, let's say it's a 10 pound dumbbell, is the same exact 10 pounds. It's obviously not changing. But what is changing is how far away from and toward this joint that the dumbbell is actually existing. So just to make a point of it, actually, I'll just move this backward a little so you can see a little bit more of a discrepancy here. All right, so here's the dumbbell at the top. What we would then do, or try to do, in terms of identifying sort of where this is imposing more total resistance on the elbow, is we would say, okay, well, here's the bottom, here's that force direction. Again, all the dumbbells are basically just trying to fall downward, and this is a little bit of an oversimplification. 
but it'll be good enough for our intents and purposes now. So we know that the dumbbell is trying to fall down at all times, right? But what we're trying to actually look at is how far away dude A or dude B is from that center point of the seesaw. And the center point of the seesaw in this case happens to be the elbow. And so to identify this moment arm, because again, the force in this case is they're all 10 pounds. To identify the moment arm distance, we basically have to look at, okay, how does the pivot point, again, the middle of the seesaw, in this case, the elbow, how does that relate to the force direction, right? So remember on the seesaw, I drew those two dudes and I drew the line straight downward. Well, what I would have to do in this case is I would have to extend the resistance upward. And if you've been watching many of these whiteboard lectures, you've seen me do this before. And what you'll notice is that the dumbbell goes right through the joint. So there's basically no distance away from the, um, the joint that the dumbbell has to act. And many of you know this experientially, what does this result in? Well, you can basically just hold the dumbbell right at your side and not feel any tension pretty much whatsoever on your biceps. But the second that you curl upward and outward here, what happens? Well, now it moves a certain distance away from that joint. Again, that 90 degree distance, which I would basically just overlap as much as I could with this forearm segment. So when the dumbbell is here, that moment arm distance is basically just the, the length of the forearm. But when the dumbbell gets here back to the top, what happens now? Well, we see, okay, if here's like a line here, here's a line here, which of these two lines is closer to this thing? Well, if I extend this line downward, which I have to do to see this effectively, now I can see that this distance is the distance represented in this position, right? So here is, we'll say A, B, and C, right? So here's the distance represented in C, Here's the distance represented in B. And then in A, here's the distance represented in A. So what we might say from a resistance perspective is that A is the lightest. So A is super light, right? Because it's right below the joint. B is the heaviest. And then C is somewhere in the middle right? Because C is not quite basically zero, but C is also not as, as far away from, you know, the elbow joint as it could be. C is basically somewhere in the middle, about half the distance as B. And so this is such a fundamental concept to understand in lifting that very few um, certifications, even for personal trainers, or just people in general, uh, I think that are talking about fitness information really uh, understand at a level that it's required to be understood to understand lifting weights. And so this is just an introduction to sort of um, give a little bit of background to a lot of the sort of drawing stuff that I do on this channel. Um, and I think it's important to understand at least at a basic level. And, you know, the takeaway from this can be very simple. If this was like a little bit too quick of an explanation, you know, perhaps just watching it again would, would, would help that understanding. But what I would say is that you don't have to really overcomplicate this conversation as much as like, you don't need to do the calculations of like, okay, how many inch pounds of torque is this in this position? Basically what we're, what we're trying to identify is how far away is a weight at any given point from the joint in question. If it's farther away from that joint, we can reasonably assume that it's heavier. And if it's closer to the joint, it's lighter, right? So for the same reason that in the bottom of a dumbbell press, the bottom of the dumbbell press is heavier because the, the weight is farther away from my shoulder. And as I get to the top, it stacks over my shoulder, right? This is hardest or not necessarily hardest, but heaviest in the middle, um, somewhere in the sort of middle on, uh, as we discussed with C, and then lightest at the bottom. One more example might be, and I'll just actually draw it really briefly because it won't take very long, is a lateral raise, right? So imagine someone is doing a lateral raise Okay, and here's their arm at the bottom with a dumbbell, and here's their arm at the top with a dumbbell, right? If we looked and we just imagine the shoulder for whatever reason was just in line with this person's spine, right? Here would be the distance of the dumbbell at the bottom. Here would be the distance of the dumbbell at the top. If we extend this line upward, because we have to, again, see that 90 degrees, here is this distance A right here from here to here. And then distance B would be from all the way over here to here, right? So distance B would basically be the length of this entire thing right here. And so again, all of you know this already based on your experience, dumbbell heavier at top than bottom, but lateral raise doesn't necessarily mean heavier at top than bottom, right? I can lean over to the side and all of a sudden things change. And the only way you're going to be able to actually identify how things change and when things change 
is by understanding this from a principle-based perspective rather than some kind of memorization perspective. So if you have any torque specific questions that I can answer about what I actually talked about here, I'm not going to answer questions about sort of things that are not related to torque in the comments, but feel free to ask questions and I'll try to answer all of your questions in the comments.